Welcome to our lecture online. Now we're going to learn how to do factoring by grouping. And notice we use the technique of grouping for various reasons. First of all, we use the method of grouping when not all terms have the same common factor. So in other words, there's not a single factor we can pull out that's common from all the terms present. Or we end up with a polynomial that has four or more terms, then it's usually a technique that might be very handy, or we use it as a special factoring technique. Remember I said there's a number of different ways in which we can factor, we're going to learn all the various techniques, and factoring by grouping is one of those special techniques that we use sometimes when the other techniques fail us. So notice here we have the same polynomial, a polynomial of four terms, and we're going to solve it by grouping in two different ways. We do that to show you that there's sometimes not a specific way in which to do that. So what we're going to do here is look at this one first. Notice we're going to group the first two terms together and then group the next two terms together. And it's not a bad idea to write little trays below it like this, little brackets that show us visually that we're going to group the first two terms together and the last two terms. Now notice when we look at the first two terms, they have a common factor, in this case, the variable a, which can then be factored out. So this can be written as a times x plus y. Then we bring down the plus, and now we look at the next two terms and realize we can factor out the common factor b. If we do that, we end up with b times x plus y. So now we reduced the polynomial of four terms into an expression or a summation of two terms. We have term number one here and we have term number two there. Now if we take a look at these two terms in the summation of these two terms right here, notice that the first term contains an x plus y and the second term contains an x plus y. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to put little circles around these two. So we have an x plus y here and we have an x plus y there. So we have two terms with a common factor x plus y which can then be factored out both of those. So when we do that, we take the x plus y out here and we take it out from here and then we end up with the following. We end up with an x plus y and that should be in parentheses right there, x plus y and then we're left with on the first term we're left with an a plus on the second term we're left with a b. And essentially you can see then that the original polynomial four terms now becomes the product of two binomials, x plus y times a plus b. Now notice what we could have done instead is we could have grouped them together differently. We can group the first and the third term together and the second and the fourth term. So we're going to rewrite it. We're going to write this as ax plus bx by moving the bx over here. So we move this one over here and then we can write this plus ay plus by by moving the ay to the right. Now if I group the first two terms and the next two terms together, notice then that the first two terms have an x in common and the next two terms have a y in common. So that means I can factor out the x of the first two terms and the y from the last two terms. So this then looks like x times a plus b, bring down the plus, and here I can pull out a y or factor out a y, which is y times a plus b. And again, I end up with the summation of two terms, x times a plus b and a y times a plus b. And again, notice in this case, they again have a common factor. In this case, the common factor will be a plus b and a plus b, which means I can factor out the a plus b out of the two terms. When I do that, I end up with, and I can put a little equal signs there, I end up with a plus b. When I factor it out, I'm left with, in the first term, an x, plus, in the second term, a y. And notice I end up with the exact same result over here that I ended up over here, even though it says a plus b times x plus y, and there it says x plus y times a plus b. That is, of course, exactly the same because of the commutative property. We can move the terms around, the factors around when they're multiplied, and it makes no difference. So we end up with the exact same result. Notice by grouping them differently, we still end up with the very same result, which is always going to be the case. It doesn't matter how you group them, you're always going to get the correct result. 
Now sometimes you'll try to group them one way and don't get anywhere, then you try to group them a different way and you get the final solution. So that can happen occasionally, but just be, uh, be assured that it really doesn't matter which way you group them as long as you group them and then factor out the common factors from each group. And that is how it's done.